Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Cantonese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Jinho. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Cantonese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence. Consider the English sentence, I eat an apple. But first, let's remove the article and here for simplicity. We're left with just, I eat apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I eat apple, we can see that the subject, I, is presented first. This is followed by the verb, eat, and then finally the object, apple, is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now, let's compare the same sentence, I eat an apple, in Cantonese. 我食蘋果. Like before, let's remove the particles to keep it simple. So we are just left with the words. If we break down the Cantonese sentence, we get the subject, 我, meaning I, then comes the verb, 食, meaning eat. And finally, we have the object, 蘋果 meaning apple. The word order for Cantonese is SVO, the same as English, easy. Right, and this is the basic word order for sentences in Cantonese. Okay, let's move on to the next section. To form basic sentences in Cantonese, keep that SVO word order in mind. Right, for example, 我看戏. I watch movie. Let's break down the sentence. We start with the subject, 我, meaning I, then comes the verb, 睇, meaning watch, and finally, we have the object, 戏, meaning movie. Subject, verb, object. Easy! Jinho, can you give us one more example? Sure, let's introduce a new subject, 你, meaning you, 你食蘋果. You eat apple. Okay, I recognize the words from the previous sentence. So, we simply change the subject that begins the sentence without changing any other parts. Is that right? Yep. Unlike the Romance languages, there is no verb conjugation or gender in the Cantonese language. Yet, the word order is similar to English. So, in fact, Cantonese is not that difficult. We start with the subject, 你, meaning you, then the verb, 食, meaning eat, and finally, the object, 蘋果, apple. That's how we form basic sentences in Cantonese. That's really simple. What about negative sentences? Forming negative sentences in Cantonese is even easier. Let's find out how. Forming negative sentences in Cantonese is easy. In most cases, we just need to add the character for no or negation. Mm. In front of the verb. Jinho, can you give us some examples? Of course. Let's use the sentence, I eat apple, 我食蘋果, for example. To make it negative, just add mm in front of the verb 食, eat, 我唔食蘋果. I don't eat apple. Now let's make the sentence, I watch movie, negative. Okay, to recap, I watch movie in Cantonese is 我睇戲. 睇 is the verb watch. So the negative version of this sentence would be 我唔睇戲. I don't watch movie. Yep. So what do you think? Pretty easy, right? Let's talk now about how to form questions in Cantonese. We're going to start with an incredibly important and useful phrase. You're going to need this to ask what something is. So put the pronoun or name of the item first, and then add 係乜? For example, if you want to ask, what is this, you'd say, 呢個是乜? In which 呢個 means this thing. And for, what is that, it's, 嗰個是乜? In which 嗰個 means that thing. If someone was talking about, say, eggettes, 雞蛋仔,飲. If you don't know what that is, then you can ask, what are eggettes? 雞蛋仔是乜? So we start with the name of the item, 雞蛋仔 is a kind of Hong Kong street snack. Then we add 係乜? to form the question, what are eggettes? Very straightforward. Now, you try to form a question. 
Leave it in the comment section for us to read. Yes, please. Okay, now let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Cantonese sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order. To form negative sentences, we put the negation character in front of the verb. And lastly, you can create basic what is something questions in Cantonese by saying the pronoun or name of an item first, followed by. Hi, Mat. Hi guys, welcome to top 25 Cantonese phrases. These are phrases we use every day in Hong Kong and other Cantonese speaking regions. Here we go. Hello. Hello. So it's pretty casual and you don't use it for formal situation. Chou san. Good morning. Chou san. We use it to greet other people before noon. It's both casual and formal, so let's say Chou san. Chou tao. Good night. You say it before you go to sleep. Chou tao. Chou tao. Bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. In Cantonese. Ngo hai. I am or I'm. So you can use it to tell people your name, your occupation, your nationality, anything. Ngo hai. Negu mai mai. What's your name? Say you meet someone new and you want to know their name. Say Negu mai mai. That is pretty casual. You can say that to people around your age. Dim Cheng Fu, what's your name? If you're talking to people that are more a higher rank or older, elderly, uh, you can say Dim Cheng Fu, Dim Cheng Fu. Uh, that's what's your name in formal situation. And then people usually tell you their surname. Say the last name is Wang. So Dim Cheng Fu, I Wang Zhang, I'm Mr. Wang. Long time no see. Say you bump into your friend on the street. Wait, how long no see? Not have tea. It's like, uh, hey, long time no see. Let's get together and have a drink or have lunch together. Nature can do ma. How are you lately? Hey, long time no see. How are you lately? How long no see? Nature can do ma. Or it can be used casually with a friend. It's like, hey, what's up? Nature can do ma. Nene. How about you? In an exam, if I got a C, it's like, oh, a lost C, Nene. It's like, I got a C, how about you? I got an A. Mm -hmm. Please. If someone's blocking you in the movie theater, just tell them, mm -hmm. please sit down, don't block me. Thank you. Thank you very much for the gift. So, is for thank you, and there are actually two thank yous in Cantonese. Dozhe is when someone gives you a gift. Mm -gai. Thank you. Mm -gai, which you heard in please, so it means please and thank you as well. For this mm -gai, this thank you, we use it when someone do something for us. Someone give you the change, someone open the door for you, pick up a fruit for you. You say mm -gai is uh, thank you for the service. Mm -sai ha he. You're welcome. So in Cantonese, it's mm sai ha he. There's literally no need to be polite. You're welcome, mm sai ha he. So when someone say, oh, mm gai sai, da zai sai, say mm sai ha he. Just like that. Hai. Yes. Nei hai mai Olivia. Hai. Like that. Mm hai. No. So hai is yes. Mm hai is no. Nei hai mai Olivia. Hai. Nei hai mai Tai Hong Yan. Mm hai. No, I'm not an astronaut. Mm gai. Excuse me. Excuse me. That is mm gai again. So we heard mm gai in three situations. Please, thank you, and now excuse me. So um, if someone is blocking your road, you can say mm gai, mm gai, mm gai, and then they would unblock. They, they would go away. If you want to ask someone on the street for the direction, you can say mm gai, sa man lo. Excuse me, I want to ask about direction. Guy, to catch someone's attention. I'm sorry. is like I'm sorry, but it's for a really minor issue. Like uh, someone stepped on your feet, and they should say And I'm meeting my friends, and I'm late. I say I'm sorry. For a more like most serious situation, for a major. Failure, you use 对唔住, 对唔住 is our next word, and um, 
It means I like, I'm really sorry. 我整烂咗你部电脑，对唔住啊。I broke your computer. I'm so sorry. 我唔见咗你个仔啊，对唔住。I lost your son. I'm so sorry. I can't find your son. 而家几点 ？What time is it？ 而家几点 ？What time is it？ What time is it？ 而家 is like now. 几点 ？Is what time？ 喺边啊 ？Where is something？ 嘟嘟嘟喺边啊 ？Where is？ 嘟嘟嘟。I want to ask about the the washroom. It's like where is the washroom？ 洗手间喺边啊？洗手间 is washroom。即系点啊 ？What do you mean？ You can use it for many different situations. When you're mad, when you want to、um, find out more about what the other person was talking about, all confused. So you can say 即系点啊 ？To show your confusion or frustration. Yeah. 几多钱啊 ？How much is it？ Or you can say 几钱啊 ？It's the same as 几多钱啊？几钱啊 ？You went to Apple Store and you want to buy something and you ask 几多钱啊 ？To to ask for the price, it's always expensive. 买单唔该 ，check please. Yeah, you use it in a restaurant. You can do this, and they will understand. That means check please. 买单唔该 ，check please. 迟啲见 ，see you later. And the last word is 迟啲见 I'll see you later. 迟啲见 And I'm Olivia from Hong Kong. Hope you like the video. And if you want to learn more Cantonese,、uh, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave us some comments. We would love to hear from you. See you next time. 迟啲见 Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is: Where is Cantonese spoken? Cantonese is the oldest language and the most popular Chinese dialect spoken in Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, and some neighboring areas around the eastern part of Guangxi. Let's get into more details. In which regions is Cantonese currently spoken? Cantonese is the official language in Hong Kong, which is Hong Kong, and Oumun, which is Macau. And today we are in Macau. And historically, the most popular form of Chinese spoken outside mainland China. We're not kidding about Cantonese being spoken everywhere. It is the most widely spoken dialect among Chinese communities in Canada, the United States of America, and Australia, as well as Europe and Southeast Asia. Is Cantonese very different from Mandarin? Cantonese and Mandarin are two of the most spoken Chinese dialects. They share the same writing system, but each dialect has terms that are unique in their regions. In the case of Cantonese, there are even some special Chinese characters not used in other dialects. Here is an interesting fact: pronunciation among native Cantonese speakers in China can be different from that of Cantonese speakers in Hong Kong. A lot of people in Hong Kong, especially the younger generation, use a lot of their own conversational slang and tend to speak what they will call "lan yam," meaning "lazy tongue." An example is the word "you." The right way to pronounce it is "nei," but in Hong Kong, many people pronounce it as "lei." How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hi, everybody. Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is Yu Ping? Yu Ping. Yu Ping, commonly known as Yu Ping, is the standard, most commonly used phonetic system for spelling Cantonese using Roman letters. It's a way to read and pronounce Cantonese words through English letters and tone numbers. For example, S I U three C O S I N to laugh is the Yu Ping for this character. Even though most Hong Kong people can understand the Yuping or other romanization systems, they are not a substitute for the Chinese characters. Let's get into more details. How is a word built when written in Yuping? 
Cantonese sound can be broken down into syllables. These syllables can be a standalone word, or they can be combined together to form compound words. Each syllable is made up of an initial sound, a final sound, and a tone. So, for learners who are not familiar with the Chinese characters, we transcribe the syllables into Romanized letters or yupin. Here is an example of a syllable in yupin: sing, which means star, s i n g one. Here, the initial sound is s, and final sound is n. In ing, and the syllable is in the first tone. The tones in Yupin are represented by a number placed on the right side of the syllable. There are numbers from one to six. Now, how common is Yupin in Hong Kong? Basically, Yupin is the transliteration of Cantonese sound for Cantonese learners, which is related to the International Phonetic Alphabet System. For native speakers, however, This is unnecessary and never taught in school, so don't be surprised when a native speaker is not aware of or doesn't know what Yupin is. There are many cases of government transliterated Hong Kong street or district names that use an obscure and unstandardized system. For example, Sam Sui Bo, Sam Sui Bo is commonly known as the Sam Sui Po district, but the transliteration Sam Sui Po is not in line with the Yupin rules. You can listen to all the sounds of Cantonese and see their corresponding Yupin romanization at www.cantoneseclass101.com/cantonese-alphabet. There is a Yupin chart with audio to aid you in perfecting the pronunciation. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comment below, and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hatsikin.